Raymond Théberge is the Commissioner of Official Languages. He is in Gatineau, Quebec. Commissioner, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. So you've received about 600 complaints about this. Is that what makes this worthy of an investigation, the volume of complaints, or is there a specific issue you're zeroing in on? I think it's important to note that uh, we do uh, thousands of investigations over, over the last number of years, and it's not based on the number of complaints that we receive. But what's important here with respect to the complaints in general is that they focus on one thing, that is we're focusing on the role that the Privy Council Office played in the selection of, of the individual and to ensure that it met its language obligations under the Official Languages Act. This is not an investigation dealing with with Mary Simon. We all know what a great candidate she is, what a great Canadian she is, but this is about whether or not the Privy Council Office complied with its language obligations as per the Official Languages Act. And there are a number of those things uh, that that are part of the act mm -hmm. that, that have to be looked at. And I think that... Um, so, so what the, specifically the would you be looking at there, sir? Like, what is it the Privy Council Office should have done for them to comply with these requirements? For example, there are certain parts of the Act that talk about positive measures, they talk about uh, the equal status of French and English, those kinds of things. What we will be doing in the context of the investigation, and by the way, the fact that the, 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 the complaints have been admissible does not mean that they are founded. Mm -hmm. We have to do the investigation. So what we will be doing is we'll be sending a set of questions to the Privy Council Office to get some more information. And based on that, we will move forward. But, but there, are, there is no conclusion in terms of where we're at, in terms of, of recommendations, whatever the, whatever the case may be. We're still working uh, right at the beginning, trying to get information from Privy Council Office. But I wonder, sir, where does the Privy Council Office fit into this? I, I know they sort of administer the vetting process and maybe the shortlist process, but ultimately it's the Prime Minister who makes the pick and then advises the Queen, and the Queen makes the final call. Um, so even if the Privy Council Office did everything right, it, 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 you know, it, it comes down to what the Queen and the Prime Minister do, does it not? But, but also I think what's important to note is, as you said, if they did everything right, then the complaint would be non-founded, so we would move, we would forward. But also, I think the issue is a bit broader, broader than just the uh, the current situation. I think the Privy Council plays a role in naming a lot of uh, key uh, people in leadership roles across the country. So we have to make sure that going forward, that they also respect their, their obligations under the Official Languages Act. So, so this is not the first time these kinds of, of issues have come up. And our role is to, to deal with, with, with federal institutions to make sure that they respect their obligations. With this particular case, obviously, we've had a significant and exceptional number of, of complaints. But that in and of itself is not the reason why right. we would investigate. So if they did something wrong in the Privy Council office, if they didn't follow uh, the procedures that they should have in the course of your investigation and have found that they violated something, what, what would that mean? What would happen next? Well, it, it's hard, it's, it's hard to, to answer that question because we haven't done the investigation. But typically, in an investigation, if it is founded, recommendations are made. And it then is up to the, the institution to implement uh, these recommendations. What we will do at, from, the, from, from this point going forward is we'll be dealing with, with PCO, dealing with the complainants, preparing a preliminary report which will be sent out to the complainants and the institution for comments and feedback, and then we will issue a final report. And I, I think it's important to bear in mind that um, what we're what we're doing is we're simply trying to ensure that the act is respected mm. and that going forward that we continue to respect the act it's over 50 years old and still to this day uh, we have challenges with with many institutions in terms of 
respecting their obligations under under the official languages act you know it's a convention in canada that the uh, governor general will be bilingual it's not a requirement of the job we've had non-bilingual um governors general in the past Raina Titian, i think would be the most recent and and, and you know there w this was a topic of conversation when mary simon was appointed and you heard from a lot of indigenous voices that saying the insistence that she speak both french and english was a requirement that a woman from a colonized people would have to speak both colonial languages. What would you say to people who raise that argument uh, that uh, against the requirement that she be officially bilingual? Well, th that that is an argument that that is 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 really not part of the Official Languages Act. But mm -hmm. what I would say is that uh, Mary Simon is an exceptional Canadian. Everyone knows that. We understand her story. She will be. Uh, a great defender of indigenous languages, of minority rights, of minority languages. So that is not the issue. But I do think the whole question of indigenous languages and official languages has to be part of a broader conversation. We now have an Indigenous Languages Act. We are modernizing the Official Languages Act. So we need this broader conversation around, around diversity in language to a certain degree. But the purview and the mandate of the Official Language Commissioner is defined by the Official Languages Act. Right, so uh, I, I guess I'm trying to understand, you say you want to remind decision makers it's entirely possible to respect official languages while being inclusive. Uh, and, and you say you want to, to remind them of their responsibilities here. So I guess what is it you hope to find that the PCO would have done in this process to, to satisfy your concerns that they are respecting the act? What are the, the main things they would have needed to do? Well, again, uh, it's too early to talk about that. But what I would say uh, is that uh, in certain parts of the Act, we do talk about positive measures. We do talk about certain steps that have to be taken uh, in certain parts of the Act. And we will see whether or not those steps were taken mm -hmm. uh, during our investigation. And, and positive steps on, on that intergovernmental affairs minister, Dominic LeBlanc, he noted earlier that Ms. Simon, uh, she, while deprived of the ability to learn French at a federal day school while growing up in Quebec, she has committed to learning French. Melanie Jolie uh, who has said that she expects the governor general to be fluent to the standard of the office, maybe by this fall. And they're assuring us that the institution of Rideau Hall will continue to function and be bilingual. Um, does that give you comfort as the official languages commissioner, those assurances from, from some of the top people in government? Government. What I would say is that uh, I welcome those initiatives. I welcome Mary Simon's openness uh, to, to, to learn French. Uh, I also uh, hope that in the future uh, that we will be able to, as I said earlier, try to be inclusive, mm -hmm. in, talk about duality. And I think we can do that in Canada. We, we, we have the kind of population where we have leaders who can do that. But I would, I'll, but I would like to, to end on, on, on this note. I think that we are at a very historic time in our, in our history. And I think that uh, Mary Simon is a great Canadian. The work that I'm doing is, is not to, as people would say, to tarnish her reputation. It's to work with Privy Council Office to ensure that going forward, we, in, we respect the Official Languages Act. Oh, no, I get that, sir. You are, you are double-checking the process. You are not questioning Ms. Simon's integrity in any way. No, I, 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 I hope that came through loud and clear in the interview, despite uh, some of the questions I may have asked you. Raymond Tebesh, uh, thank you so much, and we'll have you back on uh, once you're done your work. Thank you very much, sir. Love to come back. All thank right. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.